It's time to debunk this false idea that men are violent and women aren't. Or that testosterone causes aggression. These are bold-faced lies said to demonize men. Now, what sparked this was that Mr. Pink and Yellow and I had this conversation on his channel with this female shooter that went on a shooting spree and killed six people. Three of them were children. And of course, people, including the media, tried to frame her as a male to demonize men. Now, first they would say she was a trans woman, which she wasn't. And then when it was pointed out and people were corrected, they then jumped to the idea that she was on testosterone. And that's why she did what she did, right? Because women can't be violent. Now, I'm going to debunk that by showing you a case where this woman, who is 100% woman, was completely violent to her ex-partner, and she is nothing but estrogen-fueled, right? There's no excuse. And by the way, on the ProMail Discord, we have a channel that's devoted strictly to women harming children. And it's filled to the brim of cases. People mistake women's uh, risk aversion as being not violent. It's not true. Women choose targets that can't defend themselves or won't defend themselves. In the case of children and the elderly, it's they attack them because they can't defend themselves. In this case, the, her boyfriend doesn't defend himself, so she knows he won't defend himself. Don't mistake cowardice as nonviolence. Now we'll get into this. A jealous woman smashes her ex-boyfriend over the head with a glass bottle and an ashtray, then stabs him as he tries to leave. There you go. This guy is even trying to leave. He didn't fight back. After she assaulted him, he tries to leave and then she stabs him. So what's the excuse? No testosterone here to blame, is there? Right. Now, a woman wept as she was jailed for stabbing her ex-boyfriend in the armpit and hitting him over the head with a bottle of Smirnoff ice and an ashtray. By the way, these women, when they weep, it's not because they're sorry for what they did. They're sorry that they're going to get punished. Ernest Belford Bax, over 100 years ago, mentioned how women feel completely justified for doing the damage they do, the violence they commit. And they only turn on the waterworks when they realize that punishment is coming down the drain pipe for them. Then they turn on the crocodile tears. And that's what this woman did. Now, she became jealous after she accused him of messaging other women. Wow, I thought it was only us guys who get jealous and attack their partners, right? Actually, I, I hear many more cases of the woman doing it. Leanne Hanlon, 23, attacked her ex at home, at her home in Cardiff. She and the man had been separated for seven weeks. Wow, he wasn't even her boyfriend, really. When she attacked him, but she invited him to her house. There you go, right? So she set this man up to kill him. Or at the very least, assault him and do as much harm as she could. He wasn't breaking into her house. This guy was separated from her. And she, she has no, absolutely she has no justification of being jealous of this guy at all. They weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. So remember, it's it's not us guys. They always paint us guys as the ones that get into a relationship and then think the girl belongs to him. No, it's the other way around. It's these women. If she, she dumped him, then she wouldn't care. Obviously, he didn't want to be around her anymore. And she her attitude was like, no, no, you can't leave me. You belong to me. You're mine. Right? Now. She became jealous after thinking he was contacting other women and he showed her his phone in response. So he even proved 
that he wasn't guilty of it, even though he doesn't need to prove to her. They were separated for seven, seven weeks. This man does not owe him his life. So the average woman thinks, once you're dating me, that's it. You belong to me. You don't get to see any other girls, right? So he proved that he was innocent, and Hanlon hit him over the head with a glass bottle of Smirnoff ice and hit him again with an ashtray with both breaking on impact. Holy shit, did she ever come on to him? So the fact that she attacked him even after he proved his innocence means she really just wanted to hurt him, period. So it didn't matter what he did or didn't do. And also, you know how hard you have to hit someone to break uh, a bottle of Smirnoff ice? You know those, when you ever see those movies where the cowboys get into a brawl and they're always smashing glasses over each other's heads? The people who make those movies say these bottles are breakaway bottles. They're constructed, they immediately shatter. It's not just to protect the, the actors, which is the main reason, but also they said, you know, it's hard to smash a bottle over someone's head. Most of the times the bottles don't break. So that's the kind of force he used. Now, prosecutor Dave Pinnell said the defendant went downstairs to the neighbor's flat and was followed by the man who smashed one of the neighbor's windows. What I tell you, guys, she wasn't afraid of this man. Uh, this man smashed an object out of frustration. All you guys can back me up. Guys get angry. What do they do? They take it, their anger out on objects. They don't hit the woman. Right. <laughs> and as he went to leave, the defendant followed him and stabbed him just below the armpit using a knife. So even after assaulting him and him just taking it and leaving, she still wanted to get him. It wasn't enough. She wanted to kill him. So she's stabbing him. The moon was an inch in length under the right armpit and punctured the chest cavity, causing the man to suffer a collapsed lung. He was taken to the hospital where his chest was drained to allow for the lung to be reinflated. The victim suffered a life-threatening compression to the heart, windpipe, and major blood vessels, but went on to make a full recovery. Good on him. I'm glad to hear that. Now, Hanlon was arrested and taken into custody, but when told by the officer why she had been arrested, she said, I don't know what you're talking about. This, this one I'm talking about the crocodile tears, right? What I say about the crocodile tears? If she was actually sorry, she'd be sobbing now. She wouldn't have been lying. She later pled guilty to Section 20 wounding. She had to because the evidence was there, right? She couldn't deny it. The court heard she had a previous conviction for assaulting an emergency worker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, all... Look how nonviolent these women are, right? That estrogen is really calming, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe she dosed in testosterone when she attacked an emergency worker, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in mitigation, notice it's mitigation because there's no way she's getting out of it. James Evans said his client not accepted that her relationship with the man had ended and she has no intentions of getting back in touch with him. Dude, you're make, embarrassing yourself. You can't say she had no intentions of getting in touch with him because she admitted to inviting him. She invited him to her house. So she did. So that's a bold-faced lie. This isn't a very good lawyer, right? And yes, she didn't accept the relationship was ended. You can't leave me. You can't leave me. I'm the woman. And I'll kill you before you, I let you leave, right? He said the defendant had a difficult family background. So what? When a man stabs someone, all they do is say, you're a thug and you're going to jail. They don't care about the, what the man went through through his life. She was described as being mortified by what she had done to, hey, it doesn't matter if you can describe her. You can describe her as being eight feet tall. That's a bold-faced lie. This woman lied her ass off when the police showed up. 
She wasn't mortified. She's mortified that she's getting punished for it. Now, this really pissed me off too. These male judges that always want to let these women off the hook. He gave her a slap on the wrist, by the way, 15 lousy months. Sentencing judge Jeremy Jenkins said, he, you, you could have easily killed her ex. No, no, no. Not could have. She would have if it wasn't for the intervention of the hospital. He was dying. This is attempted murder. Anyone who takes a knife to cause really serious injury to another person is too serious to be dealt with by anything other than an immediate custodial sentence. Well, Dodd, dipshit. Notice they would never say something like this to a man who stabs someone. They just say, you're a thug and you're going behind bars. But he's basically admitting he wants to let this woman off the hook, but he doesn't have any choice. Hanlon wept and told the court, I just want to say, I'm sorry. What did Belford back say? Right. What did he say? I, I can't find the quote here because, you know, feminist Google won't show that. But Belford back said that. He said, they're crocodile tears. Women only cry when they're going to get punished. Right. Now, and he asked the judge to take her remorse into account. She's not remorseful. But Judge Jacob told her that he had no option but to send her to prison. You see, what he just admitted is he wants an option. If he was given an option to let her off completely, he would. She was sentenced to a total of lousy 15 months in of imprisonment. Wow. So attempted murder gets you a lousy 15 months? Because that man was dying. It wasn't simply that she cut him in the face and he could have died. He was dying and he was saved by the hospital. And she was giving a lousy 15 months. This should be 15 years. So this judge admitted that this slap on the wrist wasn't good enough for him. He would have let her off entirely, probably would have given her suspended sentences and said, no, don't do it again. And this, by the way, is from a woman who already attacked somebody else in the past. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> to end this off, I'm just pointing off, show this to anyone who tries to say that, you know, men are the violent sex or that testosterone causes aggression and violence. No. Estrogen-filled people commit violence all the time and they feel zero remorse for their violence. They feel completely justified for the people they attack. No, estrogen causes violence. Women are the violent people. That's what we're going to end off here.